the world of 1916 was complex, or the world of 1945 was complex, the world of 2016 is intensely complex. You'll be dealing with terrorists, you'll be dealing with hybrid armies, you'll be dealing with little green men, you're going to be dealing with tribes, you'll be dealing with national leaders and local leaders, you'll be dealing with politics and economics, and you'll be dealing with direct fire and indirect fire, and you're going to be dealing with it all, and it's all going to be dealt with simultaneously. August 31st, 2016, heading towards the end of the year, heading into October and September. This is, um, well, uh, you know, the shows we've talked about where, the, you know, President Obama has put in through executive orders to get at least 12 of the FEMA camps up and running in full just prior for the election. So it tells us, you know, that there are things going to happen, things are going to take place that we have to be very concerned about. And we know, if you're listening to this show, you're up on top of things. If you're a new listener, welcome. And, in fact, let me just kind of go over some things on who we are again, in case you are new. Um, I run a deliverance ministry, have done deliverance going on my 16th year now, I come from an environment that was extremely demonic, extremely controlled by the enemy, and it altered and changed my life. And even though I was a uh, professing Christian or a new believer in Christ at the time, I had absolutely no concept how ignorant the church was. So in, in my plight and the problems that I had, I received no help, no training, no ability whatsoever to to basically, you know, deal with the situation. And so things escalated to a point that there was a complete meltdown, complete breakdown uh, of those that I was involved with. And so in my studies and in my research trying to find truth, and I come from a technical background, I also come a little, you know, from law enforcement and search and rescue and that. So I, I was used to having things in order. I was used to seeing things that were that had some explanation to them. And there was no explanation from the mainstream churches. Now, if we are one who are is you know supposed to have the ability to to stand against the wiles of the enemy and take back what he has stolen and you know cast out demons and all the things that we were supposed to do, you know Jesus is the greatest things you will do, then where was the power? So when I came to the conclusion, and even more so in these past couple of years, that there's a plot in order to take over America, in order to take over the world, that those who stand in Christ need to step aside. And so there's been this massive um, brainwashing that has taken place to eliminate those that could have done something about it. And the enemy has done a very good job. So what we're going to be seeing is uh, an increase of the enemy with the technology, with the manpower. And with manpower, I'm being a little loose on that because we're talking about cyborgs. We're talking about those things of reptilians, those things of hybrids, clones, uh, with the veil being opened into the second heaven of creatures that are here, that were not here before. And then we have those that were bound that are now loosed. And so we're just waiting for basically everything to hit the fan. Now it is happening in different parts of the world. We need to understand here in America that, you know, the media is controlled and so the the truth of what's really happening in other places isn't being told. So they're literally in tribulation. They're literally seeing the end of the world for them take place. There are millions, thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions of people who are, are suffering, who are starving, 
who are fleeing for their lives, and there's, you know, the attempt to bring those that we really don't want here. Um, if they're willing to conform to America and to accept our ways, then fine, but that's not the case. The whole, the, what they're trying to do is overwhelm the system. They're trying to overwhelm us. They're trying to get us angry, and they want to, you know, uh, bring in martial law because of the supposable civil uh, disruption. Now, the West Coast, I talked about gun confiscation. And I've also mentioned before in past shows about myself witnessing the missile launch off the coast of California that literally went over Los Angeles, went over Phoenix, and I witnessed it continue on towards New Mexico or towards Four Corners. And as it elevated in, in altitude, it disappeared. So whatever they did with it, who knows. But, but I witnessed it myself. That was around 2011. Now, UFO sightings are increasing. Julie's seeing all kinds of stuff out there. I take a picture locally here of a, of a vehicle that's got uh, the occult symbols on it, and out the back window are, uh, you know, 100 orbs, uh, like, like a carload of children looking out the back window. Uh, we're seeing military movement um, everywhere. We're seeing trains loaded up with all kinds of armament, all kinds of troop uh, vehicles, I saw one recently being transported through here that had a machine gun nest on it. Uh, what in the world is that for here in the middle of, you know, us citizens? Uh, even the BLM, uh, you know, there's people finally getting fed up with the federal government, standoffs. You know, I, I originally, you know, grew up in Arizona, used to love to go into the mountains up north, up in the Tonto and the Coconino forest and even there they're closing the forest and kicking people out even though it is a national forest where you can go and enjoy they don't want you there so this is tyranny this is a disruption of our constitutional rights and we're going to be doing a little more on the constitution you know i just did a whole series on freemasonry and things are not as they appear in the united states this country is really was established as one more movement towards the new world takeover and by using us using our military they have accomplished a great deal in their last uh, final efforts now with smart TVs Wi-Fi cell phones all of these things you know we've talked about psychotronics we've talked about microwave weaponry those things that are used as pain compliant against us. I did my show last night. Oh, by the way, uh, if you're new, um, I was doing a regular show on Scott Henser Network here on Blog Talk. That's where Julie and I were at for over a year or so. And I've um, mothballed that and moved everything here on Tinfoil Hat Club. So Tuesdays and Thursdays I do my shows, and then Julia, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays we do the show together. So everything's now on, on Tinfoil Hat Club. Uh, Scott Henson Network is still there, still available, and that will be th uh, special shows if I use that. So we'll just see how it goes. Now, one of the issues that is taking place with everyone is extreme headaches. Um, loss of sleep, loss of memory, being lethargic. Um, autoimmune systems, things that, that mimic AIDS are starting to show up. There's people who are getting extremely sick because they can't stand against any colds or anything. Um, I've always had that problem, and I was exposed to, to very, very um, toxic industrial chemicals back in the 80s and 90s, and it really did affect me. Um, so as, as we're witnessing our, our families our friends around us become sicker, become even more distant emotionally. Um, we're starting to see uh, infractions within uh, relationships that were never there before. People, you know, if you're under a constant pain, you know, um, you, you tend, it wears you out. You know, you know, your patience gets, you know, thin. It's just a horrible thing. And the other thing is heart attacks. Uh, these weapons that are used through Wi-Fi, cell phones, you know, microwave and ELF and all the others, with their combinations, they're able to, to force different things onto us, including heart attacks. 
Now, um, I myself have experienced some of these. Some of you out there that I've been working with have been hit hard, still being hit hard. I'm still, you know, dealing with the noise in my head. And that's just the way it is now. So we better get used to it. But what we, you know, last night, I also, um, and and Monday too, by the way, uh, you know, I'm trying to bring it to a point where we need to stand together and start fighting against this. And so that means they're turning the heat up a little bit more on me, but you know what? Uh, I, that, I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm not going to stand down. I'm not going to cower. Uh, I mean, I've been fighting demons. Uh, you know you know what controller behind the computer there, uh, you know, in Boulder, Colorado? Uh, you better hit harder than the demons because I've had my rear end kicked by demons, and then I finally, when I got myself picked up and got the strength of Jesus Christ in me, I did some rear end kicking myself. And I'll tell you what, I serve a most high God. And those who try to destroy this world, God has sworn that he is going to destroy you. So you better repent, because your time's coming. You don't get away with it. And I want you to understand that if you are human, and you are an heir, then God still loves you, and you can repent. But if you do not, then the judgment will fall. And so I'm giving you that warning now, because I know you're listening. I know you're the one pushing the buttons. And if you're that sick in your head that you enjoy it, well, then you know what? When the hammer drops, so be it. Because I'm, I'm tired of it. Because it also means that you people that, who are doing this, you reptilians, you, you whatever you are, you enjoy doing this to children. You enjoy doing this to widows. You, you enjoy doing this to the homeless. The, the less fortunate, and that makes you uh, wicked. And, and as we read scripture, if God calls you wicked, you're the lowest. You are the depths of Satan, and God will deal with you personally. So good luck with that. Now, we also have the issues of false doctrine in churches. That's one of the reasons that I was mentioning that when I was trying to find answers for the situations I was in, I found opposition, that these things don't exist, that it's a lack of faith, uh, that demons cannot affect Christians, and all this other stuff, which is absolutely absurd. It is happening right before our eyes. It's been going on for a very long time, and we might as well just call it sci-fi. That's why I named the show tonight Science Fiction, because these people are still living in the science fiction world when in, in reality it is reality. It is fact. It's already proven. It's already on paper. I mean, they had to alter the DSM-5 just to make people give the appearance that they have schizophrenia, you know, paranoid schizophrenia, and all the other issues, um, trying to, you know, say they have mental illness when in reality that it's a demonization, demon possession, and psychotronic warfare against the populations. So... You know, then, then I just have to say that the mainstream church is in bed with, with Lucifer. Sorry. Uh, this, I've been doing this too many years now. And I know what's, what's what. I know that when I kick out demons, people get better. And now I've seen a new kid on the block called Psychotronics. And now I'm experiencing it myself. Now, the symptoms also from these things, whether it's demon possession, whether it's a combination of that and psychotronics, people can get very angry. People can uh, want to fight. Uh, the, you know, the uh, attacks are increasing, murders increasing, rapes increasing, uh, lawlessness in general is increasing, and most people are at their wits' end. And it's a terrible thing because uh, that's not who they are, but it's who you know the Illuminati, who the New World Order. Who these reptilians are turning them into and that's going to be part of the mass hysteria in the last days that I can you know as I mentioned before in 2005 when I saw the vision that I saw I saw an incredible amount of of insanity amongst populations where people were literally killing themselves and killing each other and I mentioned before in the book of Enoch that when the people cried out because of what the, what the um, giants were doing, what the offspring of the fallen angels were doing, you know, they, were, they had eaten all the vegetation. There wasn't anything basically left, and so they started eating the people and terrorizing them. And they, were, they were raping them, too. 
you know so we also have some of the some of the creatures were also not just the fallen angels coming into the daughters of man but the creatures then that came from the other things of strange flesh that were created then came into the daughters of men, and then you really had some whack stuff. And those are the demons we have today. So we also have an infiltration uh, and immigration and migration into the United States of all kinds of things. Now, that also means that the people who are coming here are loaded with demons. They're loaded with curses. They're, they're mixing in amongst us. They're becoming um, a problem. They are taxizing, basically, they're, they're taxing our, our system. Uh, we're having to pay through our tax system and a loan to, to support them. They're getting housing, they're getting food, uh, they're taking jobs, uh, they're getting free medical, and it's coming out of you and me. And these very people are here for our own destruction. We saw this in Germany. Uh, London's been dealing with it. Uh, it, it this is all by design. So... So how can anybody deny that these things are taking place when they're taking place right before us? I mean, you know, but those who are denying this are very much like liberals. If you're a liberal and you listen to the show, you'll, you'll get angry with me. I don't cut you any slack. Now, I don't cut conservatives any slack either because they keep voting in the same ridiculous Republicans over and over again that are actually in bed with Obama. There's no change here. Left, right doesn't matter. All this has been going on, and there's no change. And again, the church is in the middle of it. The church is actually like the old witch stirring the pot, calling out, you know, uh, hexes and vexes and spells, and, and releasing it out onto the public with all their ridiculous doctrines. Now, old movies. Um, you know, I, when I was a kid, I used to go to the local movie. I'm 60 now, and I think it was like 35 cents, and we could see a movie, a matinee or something. And uh, most of them were sci-fi. I mean, I grew up on sci-fi. And so were they actually telling us in these movies, because the Jews have owned Hollywood from day one, they're the ones, you know, the Illuminati, I don't care what you think, this is a fact. You need to understand that the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Bilderbergers, and all of them are all part of this, this uh, you know, revelation. They say they're Jews. They're not. Okay. The, the fact of it is that they're corrupt. And so in these movies, were they literally telling us what they were going to do? And I say yes. For instance, like the day the earth stood still, 1951. That was a long time ago, right? Okay, telling us about an invasion. Well, we're, we're dealing with an invasion right now that has breached in from because of CERN, cracking the veil. There you go, okay? Uh, movies as far back as 1902, Trip to the Moon. Did you ever see that silent one? It was an actual amazing um, uh, special effects for 1902. You know, it was a silent film. If you ever get a chance to see that on YouTube, it's uh, quite uh, interesting to see that. Um, Metropolis, 1927. Invasion of the Body Snatchers did a show on that. 1956, Creatures of the Black Lagoon. I can remember going to see that. 1954, so that would have been 61 that was still playing there. The Thing, 1951, they did a remake in 1982, and then they just redid it again in 2011. Uh, the Forbidden Planet, 1956. The Blob, 1958, with Steve McQueen. Now, here's what's interesting. The Blob was actually based on a police report filed in 1950 by two veteran Philadelphia police, Philadelphia, okay? Now, when anyone tells me they're from, from Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, New Jersey, and those areas, I can guarantee you that witchcraft is in the middle of that whole thing. All right, these two police officers, Joe Keenan and John Collins, saw a large, sparky mass fall to earth. They chased it. They found the mass, and it was purple. Uh, it was glittering. And one of the officers, when he touched it, it was like a purple jelly. And it was approximately six feet in diameter. And at an apex, it was about two, two feet high on, the, on that top. It was pulsating. If you've ever seen the movie, just like that. And when the officers turned off his flashlight, it glowed in the dark. Okay, just like the movie. Okay. The other interesting thing is that two more officers showed up. They saw it. They had a little more cojones to touch it. 
And when they did, what came off onto their hands was kind of a, a globalist evaporated uh, source that just dissipated and left a, an odorless scum on their hands. And then after that happened, within minutes, the whole thing just disappeared. And they just literally reported it as being like a live organism. Hence, the movie then came out after that, 1958, from the 1950 police report. Okay? Invaders from Space, 1965, The Shrinking Man. I forgot to get the date on that. Now, the reason that I bring that up is that here's all these movies, and, they, you know, that's only a small fraction. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of these movies, B-movies, whatever. And now we see today, when you go to the movies, you'll see all these occult symbols, all the symbolism, telling us everything that's going on. And yet we have people who are TIs, targeted individuals, by microwave weapons, people who are demon-infected. Uh, uh, then we have those who are demon-possessed. We have pyramids, literally all over the world, that are now shooting out light. In fact, 2012, the one down towards Mexico... In that area, uh, at the 12th hour, it too had light that was coming out from it. Apparently this is picking up again. Julie can fill us in maybe a little more on that. Talking about Planet X, uh, an entity in space that's really hovering out there that seems to appear every time we have major wars. People are you know, reporting that they're seeing two suns. Uh, I, I noticed that the sun is setting more in the north than, than in the west up here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I've mentioned that to Julie a few times. Moon oddities, you know, different um, images around the moon, re refraction, all kinds of, you know, strange things. Uh, and, you know, strange things, people acting strange. People that you've known a long time, and, and you don't even know who they are anymore. You don't know your family, okay? Uh, police acting more like military. Uh <laughs> Liberals supporting Hillary, for goodness sakes. I mean, you know, she, she's a whack job. She, you know, uh, there's, there's information. She's not even human. We're, we're dealing with a clone, and the real Hillary's already in hell. Um, but the very fact that, that they get away with what they do, the very fact that anybody would even think that it's okay to have someone like them after getting two, you know, two terms with uh, her husband, of all the corruption and all the problems and, and the altering and changing of the laws and, and, and giving away our technology to the Chinese. Uh, you need to remember that in the um, uh, patent office, patent and trademark office, that what Clinton did is he opened it up for the Chinese to actually have an office there. And as you come up with ideas, whether you, you know, when you submit them and you file, they go across the table. And the Chinese get to see it before the patent examiners do. Okay, well, that makes absolutely no sense unless you're Hillary, unless you're the Clintons, because their hands, their pockets are being lined. They have sold us out, ladies and gentlemen. They literally have the Chinese and the Soviets all ready to go. Um, mercenaries, the UN, uh, ready for the roundup. You know, I talked about California, the gun confiscation. Uh, the FEMA camps and all of that. Um, so if anyone's denying this stuff's taking place, then you've got demons in your noggin. You need a deliverance. You need to come to reality, take a big breath, roll up your sleeves, and start getting ready for the fight. Because the, the, the hoodlums, the, 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 the bad boys, are here, and they're here to stay. And so we, we need to get ready. Now, Julie... Um, you know, you've been telling me about a lot of stuff that's going on. You know, you were mentioning about the uh, BMA Awards, you know, uh, concerns about September 11th coming up. Uh, you know, it, it, and the very fact that most people are not totally getting it, that they're still living in La La Land, tells me they're in a sci-fi world. They're in that matrix. And it's very frustrating for us. And, and so I know you're frustrated, and many of the people we're working with, um, you know, if, if you're going to call us and you want us to pray for you and cast your demons out and everything, get ready to repent. Get ready to understand that you're an heir, that that's a legal right for demons to have you, and that you have generational curses on you that need to be broken, like the Freemasonry uh, that I just discussed, you know, in the past shows on my other network. 
and to understand that the only way out of this is to turn to the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ, period. And that means to humble yourself and come as little children. So, Julie, there you go. That's, uh, that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. What do you got? Well, uh, I agree and with the whole uh, you need to humble yourself. The other thing is, Scott, if, um, when, if you call me and, and, or call you and you want deliverance, one, one of the things that, that I, uh, I try to impress upon people is that when I talk to you, I'm going to talk. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the Holy Spirit tells. I'm going to use the Holy Spirit to, to even be able to communicate with you because he knows better than me. So I'm going to say and do what um, I know I'm supposed to do, and I'm going to be very sensitive to allow the Holy Spirit to take this whole thing over because that's what he does. I can't do anything without him. So here's the problem. When the Holy Spirit shows me to have this person do something, and we always have to ask them to do something, but there are certain things that we, we require, say hey, repent or whatever, you know, and that's not because we say so and we're just, you know, saying that to be saying it. Number one, we know that it doesn't work unless you do. We already know that. We've been doing this a while, okay? We're, we're, we're up with the whole thing. Number two, the Holy Spirit is how I know things about people that I, I'm praying for them and they, they invariably will say, how did you know that? I did not tell you that. That's because the Holy Spirit is showing me what I'm dealing with, okay? So when the Holy Spirit directs me to direct you to do something and you flatly refuse and that's the end of your answer is no and we're not going anywhere past that because you say no, well, when I hang up the phone, don't ever expect for me to call you back and don't expect me to answer your phone call because when I get told to do something and, and when I'm saying, look, this is what you need to do and you flat tell me no, Guess what? That means that you just told the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to do anything you just said. I'm not going to even try. So, because I'm not trying, the Holy Spirit says, well, then forget it. I mean, this is what the Holy Spirit shows. This person needs to step out in faith and do this and, and move in this direction. And I assured the person or that whoever it is I'm telling, you know, the Holy Spirit will help you. Jesus will be there to help you. Just just step out and do this. Nope, 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 nope. End of the question. Not going to do it. Nope, nope. Well, I'm done here. Because if the Holy Spirit isn't isn't working, and if he says, well, okay, whatever, I can't do anything for you. I'm not, I don't have no, I don't got no skills. I got no power. It's him that's doing it. So, you know, if you don't want to help yourself, uh, and you don't want to do what the Holy Spirit says, then don't bother calling me. <laughs> I mean, it's just because I don't have a magic pill. You know, it's him, Jesus. They're the one that take care of everything. So you know how that goes, Scott. So we just, you know, sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone. And, Scott, you and I were talking the last couple of days of how just kind of back in time, you know, uh, before we came to where we're at now, a long journey, but, we both discussed how we had gotten to the point where when, when we both exited uh, borderline personality situations dealing with those types of people, we both had, um, when you live with a borderline for so long, then you start acting like they do, which you've explained on this show before. Well, uh, you and I both had said that we, we, we wanted to act like the borderline that we were with because that's what you do when you live with them. And both of us went one day, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. That is not, I'm not going to, I'm not going down to their level. I'm not doing it. And that you and I discussed how we had to make a conscious choice to say, when you feel like going this way, you say, nope, I'm going that way. And we had to work at it. It wasn't easy. And both of us had to get, you know, Jesus, I can't do this. You got my attention. I don't know what to do. And both of us had to really humble ourselves, which was easy to do because I didn't know what to do. I had no clue. So I just think that when you come to a place where you're on, on your knees saying, I don't know what, how to work this out, I don't know what to do, and, you know, and you're, you've, been, you've been, you know, completely abused and, and what have you, 
you start thinking, okay, well, what can I do? Well, when Jesus tells you, hey, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to you and is trying to move you in a direction, if you won't go, what else do you want him to do? Pick you up and go take you there himself? I mean, that's not how it works. So I know that you and I both have discussed that the last couple of days. and It was, it was hard work. I, wasn't, wasn't it hard for you, Scott, to finally heal and get, get and to straighten your own behavior out because you, you were so used to living with her or this or that, you start becoming that or acting that way? Well, I'll tell you, um, one of the things I, I came to the understanding that if you start acting like the very individual that's abusing you, then the devil's won. Because that's in reality what's trying to trying to take place. That in time you you'll start acting like them. You'll actually enter into agreement in that behavior. Okay, and then now you're a direct opposition to the work of God, and so that puts you in bondage. That puts you in a curse, and so you know you have bitterness and unforgiveness and and uh, anger and retaliation and all this other stuff, paying evil for evil. And that puts you in bondage. And so I made a conscious decision that I was not going down that road. I was not going to allow Satan, Lucifer, and his, his demons to win by, by me turning into the very individual that, uh, that was, you know, the abusive uh, situation. And... <clears throat> And that decision was life-changing, which which eventually led to this ministry. Um, I mean, I've I've been there, ladies and gentlemen. I've been on both sides, and I finally just had to make a conscious choice who I was going to serve. And yes, I had to fight. Yes, I had to change. But you know, I, I mentioned one time that there was a situation that happened, and I reacted very very poorly. And the Holy Spirit literally played in my mind a videotape of me, the way I was acting, and I was absolutely appalled. I was absolutely disgusted with myself. And I made a conscious effort from that point forward to never be like that again. That wasn't who I was. It's who I turned into. So there you go. Go ahead. And that's exactly what happened with me. And that was way before I knew Jesus. I, I grew up with a borderline stepmom. So that's, I, I had no idea that you, you didn't be like that. I just knew I didn't like it. So I didn't want to be like that because I didn't like it. So, I, you know, it's a conscious choice. We all make them. You know, we have two choices. We can stay stuck in, in the cesspool of, you know, victimization and self-hatred and self-loathing and, Self pity, or we can we can get up and we can try. And believe me, if you do put out effort, Jesus will come. He'll do it. He'll be right there. He'll help you, and 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 he will help pick you up. And it's going to be hard. And you'll think there's days where he's not helping you, and you'll think he's not doing anything. But trust me, just keep going, and he will. You'll you'll see when you turn around and look back. And there was a very good example of this. And I'm I'm not going to say her name, but I have a very sweet sister in uh, Michigan. And um, she was 24, 25, you know, something like that. And, 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 and she was married to her soulmate, the love of her entire life. I mean, we're talking soulmate here, like her beloved everything. Beautiful big house, in-ground pool, nice cars, lots of money. You know, both of them were out, you know, had these jobs. And, all that. and, and she gets up, you know, at 4 o'clock in the morning, and she finds her sweet husband, their beloved. He's passed away on the sofa. Okay. Now, they had just adopted a, a, little, a little tiny toddler, little boy, who had some learning difficulties and, and, and type thing six weeks prior to that. So her story from there to now is a very long one. And, 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 and it's, I read, she kind of gave it, gave it in written form, and I read it, and it hurt me to read it. I felt, I felt sick when I'm reading it because I could feel her pain while I'm reading her write about her pain. I could feel it in my stomach. It was like, oh, man. And I didn't want to read anymore because it was so sad, but then I did want to read because I wanted to know how it all ended, even though I pretty much know, but it was just the whole story. 
And, you know, it's amazing how she's come from way back then to way now. And it, I cannot tell you the, the difference and how or everything she's done and how she's grown and how she got past it and how she learned. You know, I mean, this is, this is a, a person to be admired because she actually faced one of the most horrible things you can ever face. And she's raising a beautiful son now. She's remarried. She has a great life. She loves Jesus so much. And she said there were days she didn't, you know, it didn't feel like anybody was helping her. But now that she looks back, she can tell he helped her through the whole thing. Just a little story, you know, that before you think that your things are your time, you know, you've got it so bad, maybe you should put yourself in someone like that position where they, they, you know, they've lost. She's lost the everything that ever you know, mattered to her right there in front of her. So, I don't know, so I think that story it would help a lot of people to understand, you know, maybe you don't have it so bad, you know. So, anyway, on to other subjects. Um, you were talking about things changing and uh, the VMA Awards, and I am not a prophet. I am not a, what do they call it when you say something that's going to have a predictor or predictionist or however you say I don't know how you say that, but you say something's going to happen. I am not one of those people, okay? I make voice my opinion about what I think will happen, but it has nothing to do with speaking for God, all right? So that's what this is. This is a voice my opinion about what I see, and we'll see what happens. So I'm watching the VMA situation, and I, I hate all of those shows. I, I, I hate them. I don't like the music, but... I learn a lot when I watch them, and I figure out a lot of stuff, and I get a lot of information. So I'm watching this uh, clip from this thing, and there's a man that was, I guess, one of the presenters or whatever, and he has a video out, and he's well, he's actually doing a, a song, and he's going through a restaurant song, and, and it's like meals. What is it called? Meals? Round-the-clock meals? Okay, that's what it said, round-the-clock round meals. And then um, he's dancing through this restaurant, and I'm watching his hand signs, and I'm watching the people. He's he's going around all these people sitting in booths, and they're getting up, yay, how about that? And they're dancing. And so he comes around the corner, and right, right as he makes the turn, he starts to face right towards, you know, the screen. He does a dance move, and he sticks his hand in his coat. I see it. I see the half of the hand go in the coat, the hidden hand. Okay, and it was a flash. Trust me, it was just a flash. He does that, and right after he does that, I see the word round the clock, okay, round the clock. And then as he makes another turn and starts going up an aisle, 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 aisle thing, however you say it, um, as he does that, uh, behind him, up above, Round the clock, I see gigantic lit up letters, tick tock. So I go, okay, they're telling the hidden hand, round the clock, tick tock, time. Something's coming, tick tock, tick tock, right? So as he goes up the thing there, he comes around and there's a big bar counter where they get up there and eat. And behind the bar counter is a, a waitress and what have you. And then it shows a big clock up on the wall. And the hands are pointed to 1109, which is 911 backwards. Remember, I told you they do everything in reverse. Satanists like to do things in reverse. So it said 911. Well, then Beyonce, um, the, the satanic high priest witch that she is, she does a video where she comes out all dressed in white. And this has been something she's done more than once with the dressing in white. Um, because this is a message to the people. I don't know that anybody's getting it, but she comes out dressed in white, and she's got long blonde hair. Now, that is also mean, means a, that's another whole meaning for the blonde hair. Okay, why do black women want to have blonde hair? Why do they want to have straight hair? See, it's, it's all about, see, you, you, do you see how Satan perverts anything that God makes? It doesn't matter. If you're black, you've got to have your hair straightened. You need to have hair more like white people. You need to have, you know, it needs to be blonde. I mean, it's like, why can't everybody just be happy being what they are? But this is Satan. This is what he does. So she's got this long blonde hair, which is obviously extensions. And she's, she comes out of this, this 
like tunnel looking thing, and she's wearing white, and then all of a sudden you see you see the black out the black outline of her. It's just black, okay? Because it's like a shadow cast in front. And all you just see is the outline of her hat and, and her, and then you see flames. All this fire starts coming and and, and flaming up in that black shadow of her. So you see the fire, and she's singing certain lyrics, and then you get the fire going. And then she ends up coming out of it and walking toward um, the front. And as she's coming, um, you'll look around, and you'll notice there's all these dancers around her in specific spots all over the stage. Well, each dancer's dressed in white, and it looks like they have, like, a little pair of wings on. And they're all standing in the middle of a, at an, in an individual spotlight. So each one is standing within a little small spotlight. So as she sings the, 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 the lyrics to Lemonade, which, by the way, if you haven't heard it, it's a satanic song. It's just a, it's a ritual song, it, you know. So she's singing the lyrics to Lemonade. And as she's doing that, um, all of a sudden a red, a red spotlight will fall on one of the angels the angel dancers that's in the little white circle, and they fall down. Then, And the red light just stays there. Then another red light will go over another angel, and they'll fall down, and they'll just stay there. So this is what happens. Each one of these angels then have the red light spotlight put on them, and they fall down and die. That's the whole meaning, the red blood, red light. So then she ends up with this red light, right? So then all of a sudden... You know how it kind of goes dark because they're doing their costume change. All of a sudden, when it lights up again, you see Beyonce all in black, all the dancers in black. So what they just said right there is that the, the dark is going to actually overcome the light. So that's what they're saying. The dark side this time is going to win. It's going to overcome the light. And that would be Jesus Christ. Okay. Even though they call their Messiah light, that the real light is Jesus Christ. So, okay, so then she's doing this dancing. Now, as she gets to this one course part of, of Lemonade, she's coming into the camera, and she, it's just a really, it's a lot of a physical movement. Literally, and I mean literally, her face begins to morph, and it begins to change, and the possession becomes absolutely complete. Her eyes turn black. And then they turn these huge eyes that are almost white all around with a black slit going down the middle. So she's got the, her eyes morph into this reptilian slit as her face is morphing demonically. I am not kidding. It was actually quite severe. I mean, I, don't, I know there's going to be a lot of stuff on YouTube about it because you couldn't miss that, not if you tried. Uh, you know what, Scott? When I saw the TikTok, TikTok round the clock, and then I saw him put his hand in his jacket first, and then I saw the clock at 9, 11.09. Um, I'm just going to tell you what I think. I believe that they're going to do something on 9-11. I believe that's their kickoff day. That's their kickoff point. Um, I, I just do because that's the kind of stuff they do. Okay, that's, They're trying to give you a message. So before that date, if I see something like this and I see those things in, in these performances, then I start looking at while they're trying, they, they, did, they prophesied 9-11 for 20 years before they actually did it. I mean, it was, you know, 1985, uh, Back to the Future. That whole movie was one, one prophecy from in the back of 9-11, the Twin Towers, the whole thing. So... Scott, go ahead. What do you think? Well, everything that we have seen, you know, you were talking about 9-11 and, and everything they've put in movies. We've talked about that. You can go on YouTube and see all of that. Um, for us to deny it, for us to not take it into consideration and take it seriously would be a mistake. But we know something's going to happen. Anyway. I mean, we're, look at how everything's fallen into line. And you got to remember, these people are sick. Uh, th these, are, these are wicked individuals who are willing to allow the innocent, including children, uh, to perish. 
So whatever they're going to do, they believe that it's going to edify them, that it's going to give them power, it's going to bring them into another realm in the in the occult. And the whole thing's a lie because these, you know, and, and by the way, Julie, you've mentioned too that many of them aren't even human anymore. So when you have Beyonce that manifests, <clears throat> now I've seen, and I've mentioned it before, that manifestation during deliverances. Um, I've seen it in public. I've seen it quite a few times. And at first you have to shake your head and go, wow, did that really take place? But that's not the first time. I mean, she's she's known for that. If you go on YouTube, you can see all kinds of videos of her, you know, morphing of different, uh, you know, faces. But um, for us to to deny that, you know, they'll come back around and do 9-11 again, um, that would be a mistake. So something's going to happen, I, it, and it's just... Um, you know, I, I, I'm 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 at it wit's end to to the very fact of of the ignorance of the people. <laughs> Sorry, I mean I, I I'm just at shock when I'm talking to people and they just look at me like I got two heads. Um, and sometimes the emails I get from those who are supposedly professing uh, believers in Christ, um, the the programming, what they've been doing to us over the years apparently works along with the technologies that are out there because, you know, they're, they're literally not coming in the back door. They're coming in the front door this time. And the door's open. It's unlocked. And we've let them in. And that means that a lot of people are going to suffer. We, you know, we've talked about getting water and food and everything else, and, and other people deny, well, you don't need that. That's absolutely absurd. Always be ready. You know, whenever I went on a search... For somebody in the Arizona deserts, we tried to, depending on the temperatures, we would only allow uh, a team to be out maybe two hours, three at the most. They always had to have two quarts of water. They had to have their first aid kit. They had to have certain things with them before we would let them out, you know, uh, to search for the other people, the ones who were lost, because the last thing we need is for them to be victims, so then we have to do a double rescue. And, and that sometimes happens, especially in very harsh conditions. So putting yourself in a, you know, if you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, then what's coming is your own fault. And I don't mean to be harsh, but, you know, um, I've been doing this a long time. And, and so um, it's kind of like um, I, I can remember, for, for instance, this really happened. This really happened. We, w I was at this facility, and w if you know what bunny suits are, we wore bunny suits inside the clean rooms. If you know what a clean room environment, class 10, class 1,000, uh, or better. And so, you, you know, you're geared up, you're suited up in the suit. Well, in the clean room environments, they have areas that where facilities are to, to supply the equipment that are in there that are less clean. And so we were in there, and a hose broke, a water hose, and the water was spraying on a 480-volt service, electrical service, into the box and was dripping out and was on the floor, and now the floor was being covered by this that potentially was being energized by the electricity. Now, that's nothing to mess with. 110 volts with water is deadly, much less 480 and so one of the supervisors came in, and we're all stepping back away from this, from this water that's encroaching on us like the blob. And this woman, she was, wasn't quite right in the head anyways. And we yelled at her, get back, it's hot. Because we were talking about hot with electricity. And the woman took her glove off and stuck her finger in the water and, and, and said, no, it's not. Now, it was an act of God that she didn't fall over dead at that moment. Apparently, there was enough grounding to keep that water from shocking her. But do you understand that's the, 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 the scenario that I'm seeing now? We're telling you that it's hot, and you stick your finger in the water, and you say, no, it isn't, it's cold. And that gets very frustrating. Now, as, as we move closer to the things that are happening, it's going to be more obvious. You know, uh, if that woman had been shocked, it would have been her own fault. It would have been terrible. 
would have been horrible. I mean, we were trying to keep her from, from that happening, but it would have been her own fault. When, when you have a team of technicians and engineers and, and they're all standing back away from something and you think that because of who you are that you're somehow smarter than they are, uh, you're going to find out, just as Scripture says, um, you know, for, for those who have pride, that be ready to fall, okay? Because the Scripture is quite clear. The evidence in front of us is quite clear. Um, same thing with firearms. You know, Julie, you know that many of the, the semi-auto uh, firearm incidences is because people take the, the magazines out, you know, the, the, the cartridge out that holds the, the ammunition, and they're, so they're holding the bullets in their hand, and they're assuming that all the bullets are out of it, when in reality there's one chambered. And unfortunately, that's what kills a lot of people. So just to understand that what we're talking about is, is systematically leading to these end times. We're showing you what they're doing. We're telling you what's going on. The demonic's right in the middle of it. You know, then we've got this new technology or, or technology that's being more obvious. Um, how can we deny it? So, again, this sci-fi world that people are living in is an intentional matrix that along with, with uh, you, know, uh, you know, synthetic apathy is, is demonic apathy uh, at the same time. And so just wake up, because just this very thing that Julie was talking about with Beyonce, who is absolutely disgusting anyways, I mean, she, you know, she, she brags about having sex with demons, you know, incubus, whatever the situation is. And, you know, chances are she's probably, you know, the essence of, of, the, of the buddy demon that's in her is, you know, same thing anyways. But the point of it is that's how the depravity of it all. And people are watching us. See, the FCC should never have allowed, you were talking about some of the bad things that were on there, and I don't really want to discuss it. But, but um, that, there was a time the Federal Communications would have, said, would have just absolutely pulled the plug. See, one of the things about broadcasting uh, is that w there's always um, a provision that once an FCC says, cut it, they can do that. Like on radio shows, not unfortunately here, but like let's say one that is a, a regular broadcast, there can be several seconds delay. So what, what you're hearing has already taken place five seconds earlier. That way the sound engineer, if someone drops a, an F-bomb or whatever, they can cut it out or says something you know, that they, they didn't want to cut, have come forward. But here it doesn't matter anymore. That's showing you that our society, how, how low we've gone. So... There you go. Go ahead, Julie. Yeah, and and just just to kind of just um, as far as the 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 part of the stuff that he was saying, you want to repeat it. It everybody's probably already seen it, or we'll see if there's you know. But 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 let me just say this: right, Rihanna, who is the most, she's even more disgusting to me than Beyonce. Um, they they were. Uh, how do you say, they were acting out sexual acts on the stage with the men doing whatever to the women right there in, on, you know, it was disgusting, you know, and then she's on her knees and she's doing, she's acting like she's doing that to the man. And they're doing this, this is right on live television. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how is this even legal? It was, abs look, I thought last year's was bad. This made last year's look tame uh, I was in absolute shock you know so you know this was the kind of stuff that they're doing and you had all these kids watching the VMAs of little kids and they're watching them you know um, pretend like they're having sex on TV on a national show part of a whatever routine song whatever it was absolutely hideous I couldn't believe it Scott I was about to you know, I, I mean, I had to watch uh, the thing to get to even figure out what was going on. And then Rihanna's performance was every bit just as absolutely disgusting. I, you know, it's everything is just, 
it's all about perversion. And that's exactly what was going on with her performance. It was all about perversion and trying to just disgust everybody with every, anyone who has any kind of um, moral sense about them would find it disgusting. So, you know, her and Miley Cyrus, Beyonce, all these people are just, you know, and, and like you said, and I, I will tell you that they're probably not even who they were anymore. If they were human to start with, you can obviously tell the reptilian is now taken over because those reptilians are not going to share, okay? You get you a reptilian entity in there, soul's got to go, all right? But they have this stuff happening. And, <clears throat> and by the way, Kanye West, um, when he spoke on there, he made no sense whatsoever the guy was completely like just gone he i mean every every photo i see him he looks absolutely miserable like he his face is just dead he just he looks mad all the time so i don't even know if he is who i don't know but this is this is all for fame folks this is what it's for okay and um I also, uh, something else that really got, kind of got me, eh, I, I, wa- I saw a story, and the numbers varied, but the first story that came out is the one I go with. I always stick to the first numbers that they present, because that's what they're trying to get planted in the head, and after that, if the numbers were wrong, and they calculate again, they don't care, they'll just throw it out there, but the first number is generally, that's there's a reason why they're doing it, okay? So uh, I, I read a story that 323 reindeer were killed all exactly at the same moment in time in Norway as a, a huge lightning came down and they were all died instantaneously. Whammo, all of them dead. Okay, first of all, the first thing that got my attention was the number, 323. Okay, 23 is death, backwards and forwards. Well, you've got, you've got the, the satanic number of 323, three, so you've got 23 going one way and 23 going the other way. You have to understand what that means. That's 23 in both directions, all the way around. Okay, so that's like, that's like the 360-degree death, like everything dies. Okay, 32 this, or 23 this way and 23 this way. Okay, it has many meetings. Barack Obama is associated with that number, by the way, um, which is, again, talking about, you know, Barack Obama and Satan and, and uh, uh, man of perdition and all kinds of stuff like that, which I do believe he's the, the, the man of perdition that it speaks about in the biblical text. That's who I think he is. I'll just tell you that's what I think. I'm not trying to push that view on anybody. And please don't write me and call me and say you're wrong and give me a thousand reasons why. I don't want to hear it, okay? That's just what I believe. And it could be wrong. Uh, So then I said, all right, well, um, the 323 reindeer, reindeer, why do reindeer, why is reindeer, something's going on with the reindeer thing, okay? Okay. So immediately, you know, I go Satan, Santa Claus, okay? Santa, Satan, same word, just the little things mixed around. Now, Barack, when you mix Barack, take the letters of Barack and rearrange them, you get Akbar. You know, Allahu Akbar, Allah, Allah, Akbar. So that Santa, Satan, Barack, Akbar, okay, here you go. Then... I'm looking at the reindeer and where it happens in Norway. So, and way at the top of the world, like the North Pole, the North area. And Norway has its own meaning. Do that another time. But when this lightning came from heaven, it literally shot down the, the most lightning, like from heaven, and hit the earth. Okay, here's what I thought 323, Satan, Santa, Barack, Akbar, now I'm thinking the red horse is riding. We got the red horse now. The red horse just hit the earth, and he's on the ride. He's, he's running across the earth right now as we speak. Every time he passes a city, let me tell you what's going to happen. 
People are just going to be killing each other for no reason. Just mass mania, killing each other, no reason. That's what the Red Horse brings. Okay, then I go back. There's a movie called I Am Legend. I just so happened to have seen pieces and parts but wasn't really into it. I don't like movies too much, and that's nasty. But my husband had the movie, so I said, let me go, let me go check this movie out. I said, go find that for me. Here's, here's what I noticed. In the movie, Will Smith, who plays Satan, by the way, if you guys didn't get that, when you watch the movie, he's portraying Satan. Not, not a good guy. He's portraying Satan. Get it. Everywhere he goes, there's death and destruction. Okay? And what you're going to notice is the police cars. This is very significant. Police, the word is 33. Okay? In Gematria. Everywhere he goes, you're going to notice the police cars, the blue, get the color, the blue is completely dead. They're all dead. All the police, the blue is dead. Okay, Blue Lodge. Now it's Red Lodge, right, with the blood. Get that? So he's driving through these towns, and, he, and he, he's driving in what uh, I look at it, and I go, that's a red Mustang, red horse, red Mustang. As the guy's driving through these cities, all of a sudden I see reindeer running through the city. He takes off like a bat out of heck, with his weapon, chasing these reindeer, trying to get a shot on one. Evidently, I'm assuming he was hungry, okay? And he chases these reindeer all through this town trying to kill him a reindeer. But he chased him in a red Mustang, the red horse, chasing the reindeer. And then 323 reindeer all of a sudden, you know, die. Uh, you know, Scott, I just have to tell you, for me, it, I knew what I was looking at, and I know I'm, ta- I'm taking a chance telling this. I mean, you guys might think I'm crazy, but this is my job. This is what I do. So when I saw this stuff, it, it, it told me exactly the red Mustang, the red horse is riding. That's just what I think. Scott, you, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I, I, I welcome your opinion. Well, I, I, I think it's fascinating, and I think that there is a connection um, again, you know, we have to look at Will Smith and where he came from and what he's evolved to and stuff that you've been telling, you know, in the past shows, what he was willing to do to keep his, his uh, position. Um, so, of course, they're going to use him. I mean, he's, he's uh, you know, his, his family, uh, there's been a lot of changes there. But, but the movie itself, um, again, points out the craziness that we've been warning about. It literally is uh, those things that, you know, whether it's disease, you know, a, a type of bioweapon or, or whatever the situation is, when we look at the book of Revelation, that, that's pretty much it. I wanted to just quickly bring something up here. Um, in 1960, horror movies was redefined. There was a change that came through that brought it to another shock value, another shock uh, uh, level. Now, we need to remember that we're warned about guarding our hearts, uh, our ear gates and eye gates, what, what we take in, that the horror movies itself, when, when you're startled and that fracture that takes place within that second can be a point in time where fear demons enter in. There's been many people over the years that I have done deliverances on, and when I get the demons to speak, They'll say, oh, yeah, we came in during this particular movie uh, because they were so frightened that, you know, whether they were a kid or a teenager or a young adult, that was our entry point. <clears throat> so when, when Julie's talking about the shock value of Beyonce and what they're doing, this is also witnessed by our children who are taking this in. And that is setting the stage for a particular type of perversion demons because the, that is what's you know really hitting us hard is is the depravity of what's going on. That in this, that the children themselves are you know basically being set up for the next level. Now, Night of the Living Dead, uh, if you remember the movie 1968, when that came out, I think I saw it myself in 1970, 71, something like that. And there was a remake in 1990. 
And then, of course, now zombies, you know, uh, is a big deal. So, again, with what you're show, talking about in this movie and those things that are very popular on TV, um, it still puts an image in a person's mind. It still, says, it still sets the foundation for acceptance. This is one way to cause people to be hardened by something. I've mentioned before, like uh, one of the one of the things we always tried to make sure when when we you know law enforcement or search and rescue was never to be to become hardened by uh, the death. That the moment that that didn't bother you, then you're that's probably the time you need to move on to another job. And so that's what's happening now. People are been hardened. They've been conditioned. Uh, that that they're they're going to have to take it to a, another level. And watching that movie, by the way, um, that was a shocker movie. That there was stuff in there that uh, was uh, an eye opener. So, but I I absolutely agree with you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm I'm glad somebody does. It's just observations that I make, and because my whole mind is like that's what I do. I'm an occult forensic expert, so I look at uh, everything occult. And symbols and, and, and things like that. So, I, you know, my mind just starts going in these directions. And one of the things I noticed was that Will Smith, I go look at the movies he plays in. So I go back and I look. If I was a satanic high priest, what 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 would I play in? What, what would I do? If I was one of Satan's top guys over there in L.A., what movies would I do? What, what movies would I choose? Well, you know, when you look at the movies, that he chooses, mark the name of the characters that he chooses. Make sure you look at the name. In one movie, he was a god. He was one of those demigod guys or god, uh, no, he was one of the gods. And his ex-wife, whatever, partner was a blonde-headed girl, I don't remember her name, and she was a god, Okay. And they were separated after an incident, and he forgot all about his former life. And so he played one of these gods that became a, a, a nasty, drunk, you know, horrible, rough around the edges, nobody liked him person, and uh, knew who he was. Everybody knew that he was one of these gods, but he was terrible to have to live around. He was like in New York City or something. So you, you, when you start kind of looking into this stuff, there's a, there's a method to the movies they have him in. Um, it's it's all very scripted. So when I saw him in the movie, I when I saw that part of I Am Legend, I, I knew then that he was portraying Satan because he's driving a red Mustang, the red horse, and then the reindeer, and now the reindeer are dead up there. At the, it's the whole thing. Just it uh, To me, it all goes together as the red horse is now riding. So when you see cities erupt, parts of the countries erupting into complete violence and people are just running around killing each other, you might think back to this particular episode of the show to, to, to get your answers because I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. So then um, the other thing is um, there was also an article that was out um, that had very interesting it was a very interesting note, and, and the pictures were very interesting. Um, it said, on August 29th, 2016, a video was published on YouTube that was shot via an earthbound telescope. Okay, first of all, um, you're talking about the 29th. That's 8 11 okay, 8 11, 2016. So uh, 8 times 11 is 88. And I've talked to you about 88. It means um, I am an alien, false flag, um, got all the meanings of I am an alien and false flag and all these different uh, uh, meanings as in what's coming, right, decoded. So it said there was an alien base, the telescope um, on Earth found anomalies on the moon's surface. And uh, I saw these pictures, and sure enough, the alien base on the surface of the moon, and that's what I get from looking at the photos, okay? Um, subsequent information was that uh, it had to do with um, the 
I guess the the holographic hiding of the holy because it's the, they're actually hiding parts of the moon in holographs. So you look at the article and it said alien, right? Alien sums to twenty three. Okay, alien sums to twenty three, like as in lie, as in I am, as in fake, as in made, as in H two O, and it also uh, uh, sums to in the word in I N seventeen seventy six. I'm pretty sure you guys know what 70, 1776 is. Okay, it also sums to forty one alien and alien base sum to forty one like Draco King Icon um, Mass Murder USA Alien Omega Maniac and Addict. Okay, which is what I took from, you know, the alien basis, that alien, alien basis. I take this stuff out of the article, okay? Alien basis also sums to 32, like deadhead, Obama, debacle, America, media, and Agenda 21, okay? Then we say UK, the word, I mean, you know, because there's the United Kingdom, sums to 32, well, July the 4th, 7 4, 1776, also sums to 32. So if you think that we were independent, you've got another thing coming. That date was picked because it is the date, the gematria of the UK. Okay? The word alien base sums to 68, like um, directed Hermes. Logos, Barack Obama, Barack Obama 440, we know he's the 44th president, Big Bang, Changed, Malice, Bad God, God is Dead, and Killed. There's Barack Obama all over this thing again. Every story that I come across now, he's in it all over it. The word structures that was in there, some to 38. 38, like death, Jew, the bad word that starts with an N. I don't even want to say it, what they call black people. And the word Bible. Structures also sums to 164, like snake head, Omega Man, Michelle Obama, Aloha Obama, became death and addict. Again, again, there's Obama and Aloha, Obama. Structure also sums this 164 like reptilian aliens, reptilian blood, the demonic alien race, um, everlasting life, armed and dangerous, the Alpha and the Omega, fourth contact, legend of Atlantis, economic downfall, creator of the Bible, which he says he is, remember, okay, Isis and Osiris, free light energy, mysterious, and the pyramids, okay, the Genesis pyramid. That's the one we're going to be looking at, folks, the Genesis pyramid. So the, they're telling us, they're telling me, <laughs> when I see this stuff, this is what they're telling me. They're, gi- they're giving messages out to everybody it's just that most people don't actually know what they're saying. And these are, this is all the sums, and, and this is the sums, what they mean, okay? Um, they also had anomalies, um, like hologram that sums to 44, like military, like profit, okay? And this earthbound telescope captured what looks to me as like domes. I know here we have seen dome-like structures here on the earth that are built um, in different areas. Green, Greenland has several, like several, several, okay? Um, and there's round, not crater-like uh, structures on the moon that are definitely non-impacting crater circles, okay? This, this is somebody did it. Somebody else did it. Um, anyway, I, there's holographic technology always placed over the moon to keep them or keep you and I from knowing what they're doing. 
and this is what they're doing. So I, I would I would ask you to pay attention. Um, just just pay attention to your surroundings. I do know that um, if you do not have water and food, I can't think of something better for you to do than to put some food and water away. Because, you know, just like Scott said, we don't know. But, you know, in the time that it takes um, for anyone to come anywhere around uh, all these places, you know, you might get hungry. And, by the way, um, the uh, Jewish gematria on 88 is false flag, Enochian, okay? I am an alien, Kings. Berlin is coming up again. Also, Germany, <clears throat> the U.K., that keeps coming up again. That's the Angela Merkel factor, okay? That's what's going on with that right there. Um, she is, I believe, her and um, Obama, and they're, they're basically giving, um, and Hillary Clinton giving the United States to the Russians and the Chinese and letting them come in and take over. Okay, the United States. We've been given to them. Also, the Babylon God Kali is also there. We have seen a lot of the rising of the, the God Kali. Um, in New York, she was portrayed on a building, the whole outside of the building, and she's been done that way several times. Um, First Kings, as a reference to the Bible, you might want to go back and read because that's in there for a reason. Code 9 and the reason it says code nine is in reference to Satan. Nine is the number of Satan. Real magic is also referenced. So you might want to look into that. Second Kings and the name of Baal. Okay, you might want to go look into that. It also mentions Aleppo, which we know in biblical accounts was very significant. Okay, so you, you need to go and start kind of looking into those because it also talks about, it also mentions encoded DNA. Um, uh, 1 Kings 6, 16, you might want to look through there, okay? Because these are numbers that I'm getting uh, when I look up stuff and I go look. That's how I do this, you guys. I just go. I go and look everywhere. I start searching. And so um, you might want to co- go back and write that down and go look. Um you know, Scott, it's, it's, to me, it's amazing how these people are actually telling us all kinds of stuff. They're just letting it out. It's just coming out. But, but no one's paying attention, and they, they think it's okay because you guys don't understand how to do this. They think it's okay. Well, stupid you, you don't know what you're – well, they're so stupid. They didn't see it coming. They didn't, we gave them all the signs. They didn't pay attention. But there again, you know, it's got people for the most part are not made up that way. People don't go around thinking, you know, how is somebody going to screw me over today? What are they going to do? I mean, people don't go around thinking that way. Most people don't have an agenda like that. So they're relying on the fact that you don't. And then they call you stupid because you don't. You know, they, you're, because you're not like them, you're a stupid, moronic idiot that deserves to die. That, that's exactly how they think. And you tell me, how is that even logical? That you're so stupid and you're such a moron, all of you people out there, you deserve to die because you don't think in the evil, preconceived, uh, you know, evil and premeditated murders. You don't think like that, so therefore you're stupid. I mean, it's, you know what, Scott, it's so, it's so degrading how they treat the human being. They treat people, you know, most people, you, you know, you, you, you meet people, they just want to work and have a job and be able to support their family and, you know, and, and they want to love their children. They want to have, you know, family reunions and vacations and, you know, they're not looking to do anybody in or, or anything. And yet these people have such avarice and such malice in their hearts. And it's nonstop that they want to take everybody out. You're so stupid, we have to kill you. Well, what about you're so evil, we need to take you out? Okay? So this is just some of the stuff that I have come across um, just in the last few days, just looking into this. And when you start looking at these articles that are popping up, uh, you know, the reindeer, the 323, that just really hit me. And then, you know, it's just little things like that that I come across and I go, yeah, something stinks here. 
And so when, you know, you guys might want to go back and look at the article and you might want to go ahead and do maybe your own research on it. And take a look at that movie, I Am Legend. Um, the first part of the movie finds him in a red Mustang chasing a reindeer. So maybe, you know, maybe you guys will get something I didn't. Maybe you'll pick up some more I didn't. You know, I'd welcome that if anybody has any ideas. So, I don't know, Scott, there you go. That's what the moon base story told me. Lots of Dracos, Barack Obama, Aloha, Barack Obama. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, there, you know, when when you understand the mind of a criminal, and most people don't, and it's hard to. I mean, there was a time I didn't even think anything of it and had to learn it, had to understand it in order to do what I was doing. But you need to remember that a true criminal actually believes they have a right to do what they're doing. They actually believe that they can take from you, they can kill you, they can do what they want, and they have a right to do it. When an, when an officer tries, you know, intervenes, in their minds they're actually saying, how dare you stop me from doing my crime? Now, we as normal individuals can't even begin to, you know, understand that. But those who are running this government, those who are those that are, you know, of that other dimension, are criminals. They're, they're enemies of God. They're wicked. So the way they think and the way we think are completely different. Uh, and, and so that's what they're relying on as us not coming to that comprehension of who they are. Because when you do, then you'll be ready. When you finally have been abused enough, you know, I, I, was, I was telling Julie the other day that it's like the old, uh, back in the 60s, that if your mom caught you smoking, she made you sit down and smoke the whole pack. And that was, you know, you, you became absolutely nauseated sick where you thought you were going to die. And, you know, obviously the plan was that you never wanted another cigarette. Whether that worked or not, it doesn't seem to. But but you understand, and and so when you've engaged with enough people that are willing to harm you, you know, such as coming into relationship with abuse, then then eventually we pull out. Hopefully, there's some who don't, some who are in bondage, but you need deliverance because your heart's broken and you're willing to sell yourself out in order to stay in that relationship. But when you come to the understanding that there truly is an enemy out there that wants to harm you, and then as you come to another understanding that your children are at risk, your grandchildren or the people you love like a spouse, then you start taking action. I can, th this, let, let me tell you a story that happened to me, okay? There was a time that I really wasn't uh, into carrying firearms, and I went camping, and um, uh, the, the weather got really bad, and the, and the road got uh, washed out. I mean, mud was so bad that you know, we were down the frame. There was nowhere you were going to go. And then the way the cliche is in Arizona, that when the sun comes out, man, it dries like concrete. And you've you, you got to come in and literally chisel, ch ch chisel the car out. Well, we got stuck, and as we were trying to come up the road and out, which was several miles out of the, out of the uh, Tonto National Forest towards Payson, Arizona, um, there was a four-wheel drive that was with those big mud flap tires, you know, uh, jacked way up, and these, these were just a bunch of good old boys with uh, six irons strapped onto them. Uh, with a bed uh, full of cold duck bottles, they were drunk on their rear ends, and they stopped to pick us up. Well, we needed to get out of there, so we got in the back of the truck, and I noticed there were three of them in the front, and they kept looking at the individual that I was with. It was a female, and I could see they were plotting. And remember, they're carrying firearms. And so they literally made a stop, and I knew what they were going to do. I knew what they were going to do, and so did the individual I was with, and they were terrified. Now, when I was stuck where I was stuck, um, the radio that I had with me, I had just got my ham license six months earlier and bought a two-meter HT handheld transceiver that was a watt and a half made by ICOM. 
and where I was at, I couldn't get out, but since we were up the road a little more and they drove a little more, we were in a different spot. So I thought, what the heck? So I pull my radio out, I turn it on, I key it up, I give my call letters, and bam, somebody in Payson, Arizona, came back and said, are you Scott? <clears throat> Excuse me, and I said, yes. He said, well, you, you've been missing for a while. People are looking for you. They called the sheriff's office. They, they said you're a ham operator. So they called me. Are you okay? And I said, well, you know, I gave the situation. I, I gave the road. I gave the, the uh, ID of the truck we were in. Talked about three people in the front. And those people, that these three guys, their attitude changed. You could tell they weren't going to do it anymore because now they've been had, they've been exposed. The sheriff's office now had to relay the information that we were there, and that changed the whole scenario. <coughs> Excuse me. But from that day forth, I made sure that whatever situation I got into, that I had a firearm with me. Because if I had not had that radio, and obviously God was with me that day, they would have killed me, and they would have raped the individual I was with, and they probably would have killed her. These guys were, were, were scum. These guys were low lives. And so don't for a moment, and some of you have already gotten into bad situations, it's just like the highway between Phoenix and Los Angeles. That is hell's highway. There are more people who break down or people who are trying to be uh, good citizens and will pull over for somebody, and they lose their life. I can remember a married couple that had just got married, like in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania or something like that, and they were on their honeymoon, and they were driving cross-country, and they had left Phoenix and were heading for Los Angeles, and now the goodness of their heart, they stopped to help this individual who was broke down. Well, he, he, he killed the husband, raped the, the, the new bride, and then killed her. Okay, so for so you need to understand that there have been very bad people out there for a long time, right? We see history. You need to understand that that's getting worse. You need to understand that those types of people that I just described are running this country. And Julie has described some of the instances of those things that they have done. We've got those that are joining for vice presidency candidacy that have been called out for this, and you need to comprehend that they're capable of doing it and they enjoy doing it. And you need to go on yellow and, and red alert. We're, our time's up, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. Now, P.T. Barnum, now if you know who he was, Barnum Bailey Circus, said there was a sucker born every minute. Now, let's expound on that. For for instance, um, f from from Phoenix to Tucson was a killing field back in the turn of the century in the 1800s. There were there were uh, mass migrations of settlers, especially those who were Mormon, and they were along the lines of we're not going to carry firearms. You know we're we're go we're going to trust in God. And there was a horrible incident where a whole family was ambushed and they did their dirty deeds, including killing the newborn. And it was based on the fact that there were the, they had no guns. Now, that was a time when you could carry a gun. That was a time when you could do all that without an issue. And you should carry a gun. Okay, so let's not be ignorant. Let's not, let's not allow a criminal who's already thinking how he's going to get you. You know, I, and I mentioned before that one of the things of training an officer is to make sure that your gear is always tip-top, that you look like a million bucks when you're in your uniform, that your shoes are shined, your, you know, your belt is in the right order, everything, your shirt's tucked in, because the more presentation you give, the more alertness you, you show that a criminal who's, who's sizing you up to take you is less likely to take someone who's showing that they care about the way they look. Criminals will look at those individuals, especially the elderly, 
especially those that aren't really paying attention. Uh, they're the ones that the criminals are going to go after because they can get them so much easier. When, when, when you know, a group of, of criminals are considering of breaking into a house, a fourth century or whatever the circumstances, if they know there's firearms in there four to five times, they'll, they'll decide not to. Um, I, I wanted to mention in 1971, Clockwork Orange. Now, it took me 10 years to watch that movie before I ever saw it. I mean, I heard about it. But did you know that the Clockwork Orange, that the atrocities, the horrible crimes that took place in that movie, literally became a reality and have been since? Now, I don't recommend watching the movie. Uh, I forget the man's name who did that then became a very famous actor. Now he's still doing things. But uh, the mindset, to, for, for us to see things and, and have them burned into our mind, seared into our consciences, as, as we've heard before, sets the stage for acceptance. You know, if, if you've got somebody, you know, what was that? Oh, the movie Blast from the Past. Did, did anyone ever see that? That that actually was a cute movie. Now, I'm sure, Julie, if you and I sat down now, we would find all kinds of occultic stuff in it. But if you don't remember the movie, it was based during the Cold War. I won't give it off too much, but it was uh, that a family that um, uh, was preparing, just as it was, in, you know, when I was a kid growing up, we used to get underneath the, the, the desks, uh, they used to, you know, have the, the sirens go off to 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 give, you know, to, to to train us that, you know, the nuclear bombs were coming, and so we had bomb shelters. There were bomb shelters everywhere, all over the place at that time, and it was a family that ended up in there and and so forth, and then went on to to go into at the time I think the movie was in the 90s, 80s something like late 80s, 90s, maybe maybe even later I forget. But anyways, uh, the contrast from the way people were thinking then to today was so tremendous uh, that it really showed that how much ch times have changed. And that anybody who ever thought back in those days the way they did, if they were here today, you would think they were weird. But the simplicity, the, 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 the consciousness of giving the appearance that everything, you know, that, that you're not dirty-minded, that you don't have a foul mouth, that you're respectful, that you believe in a God, uh, those things are all going out the window. And, and so as, as society implodes, the demons are having more fun. And, you know, if you've got tattoos, um, you know, uh, I'm seeing such a, a massive increase of, of young women who, who on one arm or the other are, are being tattooed all the way up all the way across their chest and all the way up their neck to their up to their chin and the first couple that I saw I actually thought maybe they were burn victims because they hadn't had the coloring put in it was just that that uh, disgusting green ink or whatever it is that they use which is just horrid these people these, these people are destroying themselves Plus all the toxins. We we talked about nanotechnology, in in the ink being placed in, and there was you know there's been talk about uh, the particular metal. Uh, you know we get more people to do that because of the, the different metals, just like in fireworks. I don't know if you're familiar with fireworks, the the, the really uh, spectacular colors that come off, come because they use either copper or nickel, uh, even silvers or aluminums. And under a high temperature, they give off those colors. That's why you see that. And the Chinese have figured that out. But when you put it in dyes and stuff, and lead is also another base of this, uh, then you have toxicity. But now you also have something that is going to be reactive to microwave. Now you have something that can be easier, easily tracked. Like if you're... Um, Marooned, or let's say that that uh, you're in a ship and it goes down, and then there's a life raft. Uh, if it's one that meets the um, uh, the the emergency services of uh, the, the Coast Guard standards, uh, it has a reflective um, uh, like tent you can put up, you know, like an umbrella, and it's made of aluminum and it reflects microwave, which would be radar. 
So it's easier to, to sense that out there because now it reflects back versus human bodies. Now you have people who are getting all these tattoos, and now they're more reflective. But they're also more absorbed to be able to, to absorb microwave, which means pain, which means being burnt, which means raising the, the body temperature. I mean, this is a what people are doing is is scary, and, and please don't do it. Plus, again, many, a lot these dyes, uh, food and drug is worthless anyways. I've mentioned that uh, the stuff's coming from China and doesn't meet even eat does not meet the minimal requirements. So the toxicity of these alone, you're going to start seeing people with with different types of illnesses, cancers. Uh, behavior problems, okay? Lead is, you know, a tract with lowering IQs, aluminum for dementia, Alzheimer's. You watch, you keep an eye, it's going to start becoming uh, a higher number. Of course, if we even get to that stage, because we're just so far down the rabbit hole. All right, Julie, we got about 20 minutes. What, what else do you want to go into here? I got an email from a, a listener that wants me to vet my comments about my my pens because they're very caustic and it's my responsibility to um, let people know why I say that. I did I did let people know and I did mention it uh, over and over again, but I'll do it one more time. Let me explain something to you, all of you who have not been SRA'd and you have not been taken to military bases and you have not been traumatized, tortured, raped, sodomized, electrified, and thereafter. More torture. Let me explain something to you guys. There are a lot of us kids out there that were taken to these facilities and we were done this way. Tori Smith happens to be one of those children. He was one of those people since he was five years old that he was raped and sodomized. He watched and witnessed the rape and murder of many children right in front of him as he was a victim of this stuff. Okay, this is what happens. That's the fate to those who are chosen for this type of torture. I have said more than once, they came every night, every night and terrorized me, every single night. I was so terrorized every night. I wanted to, I thought I was going to die. This is what these people do. They're not human. I'm going to tell you, Mike Pence is reptilian. Do you understand? My friend Tori was sodomized and raped by that man and over and over again. And he watched these things happen in front of him. And he tried to go get help. He tried to tell someone, this is happening to me. Please help me. You know what they did? They killed him. They murdered him. So if you don't think the testimony of SRA victims and those of us who have been tormented and tortured our whole lives and programmed is good enough, then I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, those of us who have gone down this road and been tormented and tortured and the demons would come and whip us out of our bodies and and do horrible things to us, let me tell you, this is not something that you ever forget. And Tori was that victim, himself, in his area since he was five years old. And by the way, his sister was too, and she's dead. She got killed. She didn't make it. So he did try to get help, and he was sodomized by these men. CIA operatives have sodomized him. Terrorist and Pentagon members have sodomized him. He grew up in this, this horrible nightmare. All these elites, they're not human. What part of they aren't human? Don't you people get it? They're not human. You don't have one of them standing over you, raping you, and turning into a reptilian while they do it. See how you feel. This is what these people go through. This is how they live. Since they're little, Kathy O'Brien, look her up. Okay, she's come out and she's told what happened to her. They're not human beings. They're hybrid beings. And they are evil to the core. Okay? They're hiding in a human body. And they have a nice suit and nice looking faces. And they present themselves as nice. And they say they're against abortion. And people believe it. 
what? So you guys believe Bush was a Chris, Christian too? <laughs> yeah, Daddy Bush was what is it, Mister Mister Bush's neighborhood? That's what he did. It was Mister Bush's neighborhood, like uh, the name neighborhood guy on the um, that kids channel. Welcome to Mister Rogers' neighborhood. He'd say the same thing. Welcome to Daddy Bush's neighborhood. That's the way how he talked to the children when he was raping them. Let me tell you, these people are nothing short of evil, and they're not human. So when, when, when we come forward, all of us collectively, and talk about the things that happened to us, if you can't take our word for it that we're victims of this type of stuff, then I don't know what to tell you. Because you know what? What good does it do for us to come forward and testify to the things that have happened to us and nobody's going to believe us? And you know what? That's exactly what happened. Nobody believed Tory. In fact, the CIA officer that showed up, he looked at him and he said, we've got you. We got you. You will never, ever, ever, nothing will ever happen to them. Nothing. When he tried to file charges. Nothing. And within 30... Seven days, 38 days, Tory was dead. And I watched his demise as he went from normal to all the way down to nothing. And I saw what they did to him. And it's not right that they have the right to do this to all of us. They don't have this right. And Tory suffered his whole life because of these people. So I would, I would say... Go back and listen to the shows where I talk about Tory and what they did to him. And go back and listen to his story and how he was treated. Fifty-four children he watched get witnessed, he witnessed get raped and murdered by these animals. Saw it happen in front of his face more than once. He was taken to my labs just like other kids were. So that's my testimony, Scott, because I, you know, Scott... It's just really hard when you try to talk about this stuff in the first place. You don't want to talk about what happened. But you also know that you don't tell. People will never understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. But then when you do tell and then people don't believe you, it makes you feel like you should have never bothered in the first place. And that's what they depend on. These evil people, they depend on us to keep silent. They're not, they're not going to talk. What did, what did he tell? What exactly did that CIA guy tell Tory? He said, no one will believe you. No one will believe you. They're not going to believe you. And you know what? This is how they get away with it, because they tell the victim, no one will believe you. So there you go. I, uh, time over time over time over the years, I have parents who bring in children and we're talking toddlers, infants, um, that have horrible, horrible nightmares, night terrors, dreams that are so bad that the child will take off running in the dark and, and, you know, and hurt themselves running into walls and you know, stumbling over things to get away from the entities that are attacking them because in reality it isn't just a, a, something that's taking place in the mind, it's, it's actually happening. I mentioned before that I've had many uh, mothers call me concerned because there's now scratches on the back of their daughter. And it seems to, to usually be more female, though we do, you know, are, we'll find out that, that uh, young boys, that it's happening to them. But these, these things that are uh, reptilian, these things that are of that nature, they themselves can, are, you know, they're, they're not... Um, focused on any particular sex so it isn't like they'll always be on a female uh, they, they, they go both ways and and so our, our young boys uh, there's many, many, many that are violated many are broken I, I can't tell you how many times that I get uh, men in here that when I'm praying for them and get a manifestation or word of, of what happened um, it, it's amazing what some people have been through and they've stayed silent. I want to mention that you know one of the things that perpetrators do is when they when they stalk on a child, they know that what they'll t- say to the child is, you know, now you have to be quiet because one, no one will believe you, and if they do, they'll think you're a dirty, dirty little boy or dirty, dirty little girl. Nobody will love you. 
your parents will get rid of you. Um, you know, things like that that absolutely cause the individual uh, to grow up thinking that they're they they have no worth, that no one could really love them if they ever find out what happens to them. And this is what the perpetrators uh, are are gambling on, that there will be silence. You know, the elephant in the room scenario, those things that take place when there's an alcoholic in the family, let's say a father's an alcoholic and he's, he's a rage, rageaholic, that at the dinner table, <clears throat> that will never be discussed. And so through, through the whole life, the, the, the children grow up in fear. And a lot of times they'll then be attracted to someone like that and marry them because it's familiar. It's all they know. So a lot of these people who are abused at an early age tend to gravitate towards that, but it's also in the spirit realm too because of the see see the the, the Satan doesn't play fair. So when a when a child is a victim of whatever, whether it's abuse, you know, a, a molestation, let's say, there'll be a transfer of demons because it's an abomination. A crime has taken place in the spirit realm. And so the child also gets spirit plus. There's also a soul tie that's been been created. And so then there there may be a, an actual attraction to that behavior later on because of that soul tie. It's very twisted, very very horrible to think that this takes place. So I want you to understand when when it, you know the fact that I don't like hearing these stories either. But when a child comes in and it, it, you know, I haven't had to deal with anything for a couple of years that was immediate. But if I get any inkling that, that there's someone assaulting this child, um, I'm, I'm going to, to deal with it. I'm not going to, to sweep it under the rug. I can't. And, and so that ch- children deserve to be children. Children need love. They need, they need direction. They need to to know they're safe. And when a child doesn't have that, then their world is, uh, their their childhood is taken from them. They grow up rapidly in a survival mode uh, of every day. And, And so it changes who they are. Now, many people who have borderline personality disorder, as I've written before in my book, uh, BPD or Jezebel, that there's a particular order of multiple personalities and a particular order of demons that cause this particular uh, issue. And of course, you're not going to get that in any of the DSM-5s or any of the psychologists, and my book is out there, and boy, I've been hit hard. But you know what? Uh, I, I, I see it, I, it, it continues to rear its ugly head. I'm dealing with people who, who are victims of borderlines, and as we mentioned earlier in the show, that a lot of times those who are around borderlines, because of the demon transfer and the soul ties that are created demonically, demonic soul ties, that they start acting like the perpetrator. They start acting like the borderline. And you'll find that borderline actually runs in families. Why? Because it's a generational curse. Borderline personality disorder is is one of the worst things that Lucifer has ever done to God's people. Because those who have it, that truly do, you know, there's several categories, but you can still have, you know, um, issues, even if you don't have all the categories that classify you in that, that uh, less than 1% ever come out of it. Now, when they say come out of it, what does that mean? I mean you're on medication the rest of your life? Well, the sad thing of it is, is that there is a way out. God has provided a way out for all of us. And again, I hold the mainstream churches responsible for those who have borderline personality disorder because if churches had been doing what they were supposed to do, that child would have never been abused. That demon, demons, that did what they did would have been thrown to the pit. The curses would have been broke off the family. That child would have been what God intended them to be and not turn into what Lucifer did to them. And so when you hear about Tori, when you hear about the stories, what happened to to Julie, 
Uh, this is because good men did nothing. Good women did nothing. And it's all the brainwashing to allow the last of days here to escalate into what is happening without any opposition against evil because the opposition that was put in place by God has been is, is systematically being dismantled. So if you're, you know, um, a, a new ager, and, you know, if, if you're a liberal or whatever it is and you have to be listening to us, understand that this is what we deal with every day. And, and we've even had, you know, some listeners that, that thought that, you know, some of the broadcasts that we have done, especially with the interviewing of those who are TIs, targeted individuals, that this was too heavy and they couldn't listen to it. Um, well, what am I going to do, sweep it under the rug? You know, these, everyone deserves their day in court. And, and being able to, to, to get the confidence to come on the air and discuss what's happening to them also is a healing mechanism for the individual. Because now we understand they're not alone. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the hope is restored. So that's what Satan does. He tries to steal your hope from you. That's why I talked about suicide the other day, being isolated, being put into a category, like I was mentioning earlier before, that you lose your worth. You, you think nobody will love you. If they know who you are, they wouldn't like you because of what happened to you or maybe even what you did because you participated under duress during a satanic ritual abuse. And this is what we refer to as satanic ritual abuse which also is part of the monarch mind control, MK Ultra, of these things. And and again, you need to remember Clinton, when he was in office, made a you know, he made a public apology about what the, what uh, the CIA was doing, which wasn't just the CIA, the Pentagon, uh, other other black ops that are going on, uh, but it never stopped. If anything, it's increased. So the recognition that this is this is being done, this, this is why Julie and I do what we do. We have experienced it. I've seen it. I've smelt it. I've tasted it. I've felt it. It does exist. People are suffering because of the evil that has been allowed to roam, being that, that has not been harnessed, that has not been taken down, that has not been eliminated, that has not been destroyed. And, and the sad thing of it is, is we have all the tools necessary to, to make things right. And again, because good men did nothing, good women did nothing, there's more suffering coming. I, I wish I could tell you different, but that's why we do the show. We're not here to, make, to, to, to centralize anything. This is a situation that calls for the alarm to come to arms, you know, Paul Revere, two arms. But, and Because no one else is going to do it. These people who, who, who are in charge of the government, who, or, you know, or at least have, have taken control of it, have taken away our abilities to protect ourselves. We, we were to have the Minuteman. We, we were to have the militia. That's what the firearms idea was all about. And, and so the, the very ones that say that they are protecting us are actually the perpetrators. And, and when you look at a true crime situation, when you look at rape, when you look at murder, the large percentages of the victim knew the one who did it. Many times uh, you'll see a case where people will you know, get a knock at the door, and someone to say, well, my vehicles broke down. I was on a case once. This was, this was for real. And this guy's in with his, his wife. Someone comes to the door, says that uh, he's got car problems. You know, uh, he's, he's looking for assistance. So the guy gets up, goes out, and while he's looking under the hood, he gets an ax in the back of the head. So my job was to find that axe. So, so here we are. Our heads are under the hood. We're looking downward 
and the axe is on the way down. And and hopefully the air filter is a nice shiny chrome one and you see it coming and you pull out of the way. Get ready. I don't like it. I don't like it at all because it means the people I care about are, are going to be in a very bad situation. And and I'm dealing more and more with people who are being victimized by psychotronics, microwave weaponry, ELF, uh, just just absolute terror that comes from, from the things that are being done, worried about heart attacks, high blood pressure, um, losing, you know, your body functions. I mean, this is a terrible thing to do to somebody. It's... But these, this, this is the people running our government. Wake up! And now, you know, there's information because of of the uh, the program with Beyonce that they're going to do it again. You know, they say lightning doesn't strike twice in the same. You know, that that's absolutely absurd. Of course, it does. I knew a woman back in the '80s; her house was strike struck twice within the same summer, and the se- second time around, it caught it on fire. You know, what, what was the World, Guinness World Book of Records with that one um, guy that was a forester? He was a forest ranger. You know, what was he hit seven, six, seven, eight times? <laughs> Holy smokes, you know. Anytime a storm came, he'd get in his car and he'd drive off to get away from as far as possible. And there is a, ph- a phenomenon that takes place when lightning can actually breach away from the storm and then strike something f- far away. So he gets away from it, he gets out of his car, out of his uh, truck, and he doesn't take two steps, and he gets hit by, you know, the, by the last bolt of lightning. Um, so what happened here during Civil War? What happened, you know, during the invasion of the Redcoats? What is, is, is happening again? Only this time it's high tech. So just get ready. Anyways, all right, Julie, we're down to the last of it here. I'll just close it out. Uh, again, remember that uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays I'm here now on, on Tinfoil Hat Club doing the show, and then Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, then it's uh, Julie and I. So, All right, Julie, I'm just going to bring it out, and um, we'll see you on Friday, and then I will be here tomorrow night. So, okay, God bless.